Hey everybody, Koldar here. We're doing some challenge mode guides. I'm excited to be doing these, and this is the gold run for Scarlet Halls. And as you notice, this is 75% of normal playback speed. So just to give a little more time to talk things through. So as you begin, your tank, which is the role I'm playing here, should run ahead of everyone to get aggro on that dog that's on the chain, and then quickly aggro the roamer pack with the watchman and the dogs. Uh, when you engage them, make sure your tank hits the Watchman with at least one damaging attack. This will tag the Watchman, so to speak, So you, just like if you're tagging a quest mob. And then you throw the bucket on the Watchman, the dogs devour it, and then you'll get credit for killing that enemy. The dogs don't count for credit for the challenge mode, but the Watchmen do count. So there's two roamer packs before this long haul here. And you need to get credit for both of those. Um, the number of enemies you kill in this zone is exactly going to be 50 if you follow this guide as we do it. And it's really important that you don't kill extras. It's just a waste of time. But you need to get credit for those. So the dog packs can be a little bit tricky and buggy. So make sure you have two enemies slain by the time you're pulling this pack here. Uh, anyway, this haul is pretty simple. Use someone with a... Um, a move ahead ability. So like disengage for hunters, or you saw myself as a monk, we can use roll uh, to grab the uh, forward most shield, move ahead as quickly as possible, and get in range of these enemies at the end. And then you just AE them to get aggro off the healer and go from there. Afterward, your tank should pick up a bucket right away and then take a right. Again, there's a rumor pack here. So aggro, tag the watchman with a damaging attack, then throw the bucket and he will die. And grab another bucket on the way back. You can see I forgot about that. Uh, there's also a loose dog that sometimes happens. Again, these are sort of buggy, these packs. But just bring him with you. And then the final Watchman Roamer pack there. Same deal. Tag him first so you get credit. And then throw a bucket. And then engage the boss right away. So about halfway through this boss, or a little bit before, you should get credit for the two watchmen that the dogs devoured earlier. So at this point, you should have 13 enemies killed. If you're halfway or further into this boss fight and you don't have 13, you have fewer, then it means that you didn't get credit somewhere and you should reset because you won't get enough elsewhere. You'll also notice, uh, again, buggy stuff. The dogs aggroed, even though they should have been asleep, so I'm aiming them to pick them up and kind of annoying, makes things a little more difficult. Uh, but this boss is not too challenging. Uh, so generally speaking, your DPS should single target the boss. There's really no benefit to aing the dogs down. It's just wasted damage. Uh, I'm aing to finish the dogs that are not part of the encounter, the ones that came in from that sleeping pack. But everyone else is just single targeting the boss. And... Uh, there's a fair bit of damage on the tank, so make sure your tank saves their cooldowns and uses them kind of in the second half of the encounter, where the number of dogs are higher. Um, you can also use stuns, AE stuns, when there's four or five dogs are really strong here. And then it's just like the heroic version, just get the boss uh, down low and the dogs will just turn on him and devour him. Uh, also, for DPS purposes, you should use Bloodlust during this boss if you have it available, but do not use DPS potions. Uh, make sure you remind everyone in the group not to do that. You can probably use a DPS potion on that uh, shield hallway where, you, where I was rolling down to aggro the, group, the archer pack. As long as you drop combat at that after that point before this boss is engaged so that the one minute potion timer comes off cooldown, then you'll be okay but don't use potions on this boss because you need them right after this. So obviously wait for these dogs to devour those guys. And here's where we use invisibility potions. Uh, it's a pretty common tactic if you haven't done challenge modes in high end yet. So either invisibility potion will, will work using the lesser ones here. Uh, and you can see that we simply use them at the bottom of the stairs and then run, run diagonally across this entire cannon area. Once you reach the bottom of the stairs on the other side, you want to immediately engage this pack of, of roamers at the bottom. You need this set of enemies. So this is a pretty damaging and challenging pull. Uh, there's five, obviously five enemies here, a variety of them. 
Uh, as the tank, I tend to keep the evangelist targeted so that I can interrupt their holy fire ability. It's a long cast time, but it hits for insane damage, so I like to interrupt that. Uh, otherwise, you should really just blow all your defensive survival cooldowns for this. These guys don't mess around. So again, AE stuns, rotation of stuns are really good here. Obviously, all your tank cooldowns should be used. Um, pretty much whatever you've got if you you know feel like you're going to have trouble. And I actually forgot to use my uh, Tiger Pet, so my mistake there. But the goal here is to kill that pack and then run to the boss um, over here without engaging that roamer pack that's at the top of the stairs. So make sure they are not near you when you run across. This way you'll fight the boss, and during time fighting the boss, give yourself time for your defensive cooldowns to come back up so that you can pull the next pack that was at the top of the stairs. So this boss is pretty simple. Um, your tank and your melee should be at the bottom where the boss is here, and make sure you are behind him if you're melee DPS because he cleaves. Your healer can either be on that second story so you can see where our druid healer is, or just down below behind the boss, doesn't matter. Um, just make sure it's a position that your tank can pull aggro off the healer because most of the new spawns that come in will aggro the healer. So if you have a ranged attack as a tank like I do there, uh, then that works just fine. But again, similar to that first boss, single target damage is the order of the day. And uh, I forgot to mention, you'll notice there's the Defender, uh, which is an extra mob from the previous pack. And this is uh, always pretty much going to be the case. Defenders take 90% reduced damage from AE attacks. And since you can't f afford to single target mobs in challenge modes for, for high-end times, you have to AE. So this means the defender will be left over, usually 50% or higher health, uh, at the end of those pulls. So just do what we did, drag him up with you um, into the next fight, into the boss fight in this case. And he will just die over time as you're dealing with the boss. You don't have to really focus on him. So boss did his spin move. And our DPS on the boss here is a little bit low. Uh, generally, it was higher in previous attempts. Um, but that's sort of the, the way that this group is working for us. We j tend to have higher damage on the trash and low damage on bosses, um, but it works out. So when the boss gets below 50%, he'll start gaining stacks of an Enrage buff, increasing his damage. So if you have a form of Enrage to spell, uh, you should probably dispel him around every 10 stacks or so. Uh, otherwise, he hits the tank pretty hard. Um, and then he's going to do another Blades of Light. So as a tank, I do it properly this time. I forgot about it the first time. Uh, your tank should try to get all the mobs that are on you grabbed up in his spin move here. So look at the side he's coming up on. So in that case, he was coming up on the left. So I move slightly off to the left at the top of the stairs and then wait till the last moment to drop down so that all the NPCs that were on me get picked up by his spin there. Then you can just stay in the middle here on the bottom floor as he finishes and re-engage him. So once he gets to you know 15-20% health, you want to start moving him up top. The idea here is to have him die basically at the moment that he's at the top of the ramp along with most of your group so that you can just go immediately from fighting this boss to entering the hallway again and pulling the next trash pack. This will save you a few seconds of running from down below all the way up after he dies. And that's kind of a general tip for all challenge mode stuff, right? Just you want to be as efficient as possible with your your time allotment for doing damage, all that good stuff. So once your healer is comfortable and able to start drinking, just immediately pull. This pull here is the hardest uh, aspect of this entire run. It will destroy you if you aren't ready for it. So as you can see, there are seven mobs in this pull. It's, you know, obviously two more than the last one. It's a crazy amount of stuff going on. Uh, so again, it's just like before. Use all the cooldowns you have available. Stun them, uh, you know, in patterns. Make sure you interrupt properly, uh, especially if you have other melee DPS. You know, have them assigned to interrupt a particular mob or a couple mobs if they can. 
Um, yeah, and it depends, you know, of course, what your group makeup is. But, um, for example, Death Knight tanks, probably the strongest in challenge modes right now. So Army of the Dead for this pull just trivializes it completely. Um, so anything you have that, that will assist you in this particular pull just to survive long enough to get most of the mobs down is what you want to do. And once again, like the previous one, we have a defender left over. So just drag him along to the next group. And uh, you can pull either this entire hull or half of it. We're doing about a half in this pull because our healer's mana is not that great. And she wasn't allowed to drink because of the defender. So uh, just adjust accordingly. These, these mobs in this little hull here are not that difficult, but they do throw statues at random players which can be a lot of spike damage if the randomness is unfavorable to you. Uh, but otherwise, you're just going to AE them down, and they don't really hit that hard on the tank. And we got another roamer coming in, unfortunately. So we're not going to be able to drop combat here and allow drinking. So basically, we finish this set of AE mobs that are low, and then we'll drag the next one into the next pack. Uh, I'll mention briefly, since there isn't enough other things to talk about at the moment, that uh, even though I'm the tank, if you look at my health, I have really low health for a tank, <laughs> even in this eye level. Um, I'm pretty much geared entirely for DPS. Uh, the thinking is that, you know, while I'm tank spec challenge modes are all about time. And uh, anything I can do to speed things up, as long as my survival is not... Uh, total issue is going to be, you know, beneficial. So you'll have to adjust accordingly for your group, but that seems to work best for us. And so, yeah, we're full pulling the second half of this haul. Nothing too tricky about it. And just aiming things down. It's a pretty cool zone uh, for challenge mode. It's not too difficult, and the nice thing is that it's fast. Uh, it can be a little bit frustrating in the beginning because, as I said, the dogs are kind of annoying and buggy. But once you figure out how to do the, the bucket pulls properly, um, get past those dogs on the chain, then the rest is not all that hard. And if you aren't aware, challenge mode... Uh, Obviously, it lowers your eye level uh, of your gear automatically, but it does not diminish the bonuses from gems that are socketed. So if you want to completely maximize your stats for challenge modes, get a gear, gear set with as many gem sockets as you can, and uh, this will help you immensely. I think the same goes for set bonuses as well. I'm, I don't believe those are diminished either, but... I can't say 100% on that one. So this final haul here with the scholars and uh, the pupils, uh, just pull them in two pulls. We tried a, a number of times pulling the entire haul at once, but the damage just was too much um, to mitigate. And you know, depending on your time left, you probably won't have too much issue splitting them up. Obviously interrupt the scholar when he does the the red dome thing there and that'll uh, prevent him from mitigating damage on the group and you'll get that one roamer that's in this hall uh, we pulled him with the last pack and you can see him there he's lagging behind so that uh, basically he's AE'd down during two separate pulls rather than just one time But the rest, yeah, this is pretty simple. Once you get past that, that pull at the top of the ramp after the second boss, uh, the seven mob pull, then the rest is, is just clean up for the most part. So immediately engage this boss. You don't need a lot of mana or anything like that. You don't really need cooldowns. This boss very easy. Um, interrupt Pyroblast whenever you can. It's, it's a pretty hefty amount of damage. For your tank, save your cooldowns for when you have to block the book burner beam. 
So that beam there, just stand in front of it. And you'll absorb that hit. And it will not burn the books, which means you don't have this huge amount of fire hitting everyone that's on that side of the room. Sometimes when he does book burner, he will immediately use an instant pyroblast uh, to follow it. Uh, I don't know what triggers that. Um, just sometimes he does it. So just be aware that if you don't have a cooldown, you should be full health at least. Otherwise, he could potentially one-shot your tank, especially if you have low health like I do. <laughs> And yeah, you can see Dragon's Breath, same as Rook. Uh, just dodge around him. There was the instant Pyroblast following the book burn. So the dot from Pyroblast is around 30,000 uh, a tick. It can be dispelled, of course, with magic. Um, but the initial hit is really the, the big damaging thing. And your Bloodlust should probably be available at some point during this boss fight. Uh, ours came up about halfway through, we may have seen. So, again, that's just based on using it on the first Houndmaster boss. And then, you know, if you're maintaining decent time to meet gold, it will come up again uh, during this. Your potions probably won't, because obviously 10-minute potion cooldown from using Invis is pretty extensive. And just finishing them off. So I think this boss takes around two minutes, maybe a little bit less. So you can, you know, see based on your time left whether you're close or not. But that's it. That's the Challenge Mode Gold Guide for Scarlet Halls. It's a lot of fun. So give you give it a shot and good luck. Thanks for watching.